lots of good and bad news for Tesla for the week. Which one you want first? I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. Well, since we're starting with the stock performance, let's go with the bad news. Well, it finished the week at 599 smackaroos and 5 cent a smackaroos, down 4% for the week, with a big dip there yesterday with some horrible rumors out of China that demand has collapsed. It recovered today, presumably because people figured it out. Dow Jones up half a percent, NASDAQ up half a percent, S&P 500 up half a percent. What a consistent week all around, unless your name is Tesla. So the only piece of news before we get into the good and bad is giant public pension fund doubled its Tesla position in Q1 2021. It's not that big and it didn't move the stock that much, but still, with $140 billion in assets under management, they added to their Tesla position, but, you know, didn't really make that big of a difference. They have 104,000 shares. Let's, uh, you know, let's not let the glass handers make them broke. So let's get into the bad news. Austin Airport records fourth wettest May ever. That is a lot of inches of rain and it's, uh, yeah, it's real bad. This is, uh, in the last 30 days, we're looking at anywhere from four-ish to eight-ish inches. And uh, for reference, 12 inches is 30 centimeters, so this would be, what, uh, two-thirds of that. So 20 centimeters, uh, 10 centimeters. That's a lot of rain. That's a lot of rain. And to give you an idea how much rain it is, for a facility that does not have drainage in place yet, it looks a little bit like this. That, to me, looks like a water main. It looks like two or three fire hydrants on the roof got run over. This is going to make this week's progress a bit challenging. The Wall Street Journal is reporting Tesla failed to oversee Elon Musk's tweets. The SEC has argued in letters but not court. This is old news. 2019 and 2020, two tweets in specific, one where he said the share price was too high and another where he said, we're hoping to have uh, solar roofs ramping up quickly. And the thing is the SEC is probably wholly without standing in this and, you know, fudge them. Fudge them's what I say but fudge them gently because they can still fudge you back. The Democratic Republic of Congo, which is not really much of a democracy or a republic, has banned the export of cobalt, which could have an impact on battery supply globally because, you know, uh, cobalt is in a lot of the batteries and uh, you kind of need it and they're the world's largest exporter. Tesla fondly recalls over 5,000 Model 3 and Y vehicles over seatbelt issues. This got kind of blown out of proportion too. It's not very many vehicles and it's not something super critical. There could be loose bolts and uh, even if it costs a couple hundred bucks each, we're, we're not talking about that much money, like a million bucks compared to a company churning billions. Come on. Tesla has said it is not aware of any accidents or injuries caused by these defects. They're going to get it sorted out. Knock it off. Pierre Ferragou has tweeted, Quick thought, Tesla's shipping cars from China to Europe and increasing the prices in the U.S. Underlying reality, demand in the U.S. is insane. Tesla has to increase prices and keep all local production on shore just to manage it. Q221 will be interesting. To which noted African-American Elon Musk tweeted, our biggest challenge is a supply chain, especially microcontroller chips. Never seen anything like it. Fear of running out is causing every company to overorder, like the toilet paper shortage, but at an epic scale. 
That said, it's of not a long-term issue. Well, it is an issue, uh, but let's see if that's actually true according to Intel. Look at that. Intel CEO says semiconductor shortage could last years. And yeah, everybody's buying in bulk and hoarding. And even if they weren't, foundry capacity is, uh, res is restricted. And people are just buying chips. Everything's got them. But they're not the only ones who make chips. You can always use a different brand. Acer says global chip shortage to slow laptop production until at least next year. Well, that's not good either. So we're still in the bad news. Let's see what the next one's got. Medium news. Model S Plaid delivery pushed to June 10th. Needs one more week of tweak. The car feels like a spaceship. Words cannot describe the limbic resonance. And from trying to Google it, words can't describe limbic resonance either. Maybe you can explain it in the comments. Vincent saying he can't wait. Dave Lee on investing is saying, let's go rocket ship. So great. So let's get on to the good news. Chinese investment bank expects Tesla Giga Shanghai to deliver 107,000 units in Q2. Well, there are rumors out from Ray for Tesla saying it could be quite a bit higher than that, maybe even 128,000 units. But if the banks are saying 107 and they're happy about that, I'm happy about that too. So let's move on. Tesla to buy more than 1 billion of Australian battery minerals a year. Uh, great. Uh, the nice thing about Australia is that they're not a conflict country in terms of minerals, uh, unless you count the, you know, normal political strife. It's generally good news. Tesla already sources three quarters of its lithium from Australia and over a third of its nickel. Exceptional news looking at the global sales for April. And year to date, Tesla Model 3, first place for both by quite a bit. It outpaced the Wuling Hong Kong Mini, which is only a $5,000 car. And if you add in the Model Y, I mean, that's a lot of units, my friend. That's oh, basically almost a quarter million, putting you on pace to meet, if not exceed, 2021 guidance. Tasmanian is reporting Tesla Model Y became the best-selling foreign car in South Korea in May. Well, this is another one of those anecdotes because shipping is lumpy, but the recently launched sales of the Tesla Model Y in South Korea were a big surprise. You remember like a week ago when there was that whole thing in China saying, oh, sales are way down, where'd all the cars go? Well, they went in part to Korea. Tesla registered 3,461 models Y in South Korea just in May. Not bad. Tesla Model Y overtakes Model 3 in April global EV sales? Model 3 number one in 2021. What? You're, st you're telling me that they're selling more Model Ys than 3s? That would be fantastic if it turns out to be true because it's a more expensive car that's less expensive to build. Amongst the most exciting news of the week, Tesla Model S Plaid world record 9.2 second quarter mile confirmed by Jay Leno. Well, he's not exactly an authority, but an NHRA official who recorded it said, yep, indeed, 9.247 seconds. This is a fast car and it's not even the Plaid Plus. This is exciting. Faster than the Bugatti, 27 times less expensive. EV Club of Connecticut is reporting a Tesla police vehicle saves Westport tens of thousands of dollars. Despite being a bit more expensive up front, over time it ends up being cheaper. The purchase premium is recouped in one year. And after four years, the savings are enough to pay for another Tesla. Further in battery news, Tesla gives over 3 million to Canadian researchers to develop cheaper, longer-lasting battery cells. Well, 
you know, three million isn't much, but this is uh, Jeff Don's lab and they do amazing work up there. And you know, if he needs funding, give it to him because it works. And what an arrangement it is. They <laughs> keep giving him money and he keeps coming up with breakthroughs. And despite having what is pretty inarguably the best batteries on the market already, they still only getting better. Still on batteries, Tesla to use LG Chem 90% nickel NCMA cathode for Shanghai built Model Y. So yeah, LG Chem is one of the main providers of batteries in China for Tesla. And uh, yeah, this is a reduced cobalt formula. And that's great, especially since if you remember a few minutes ago, we said DRC not excited about exporting it. NASDAQ is reporting. NASDAQ is reporting. All right. Tesla supplier CATL plans a major battery plant in Shanghai, according to sources. This is great. Uh, yeah, Tesla is not tied into one battery provider. They buy them from whomever has got them. And at some point soon, if not already, will be making their own. This is how you do it. If you want to sell a million or 10 million cars, you need to buy batteries from everyone. Tesla applies for permission to produce batteries at Giga Berlin. Now, I thought they already had permission. Well, yeah, sort of they did. This is where it's going to be built, the battery factory here. This is the motor works where I had believed the batteries were going to be built before, and maybe that was the plan. But there's a massive government incentive to onshore battery production for EVs. And in order to qualify, they would have to be a new battery factory, not an existing one. So they held off on requesting the permit until the paperwork was finalized on the incentives. And now they're steamrolling ahead. The Brandenburg Minister of Economic Development, Steinbach, is reporting construction of Tesla plant in the final spurt. Oh boy, I hope that's just a weird translation. Construction of the Gigafactory in Grunheide on the outskirts of Berlin is in the home stretch. This was not announced by Tesla, but by the Brandenburg Minister for Economic Affairs. Yeah, it's great. And you can see Tesla has hired a thousand workers so far. And by the time of production, they will definitely grow to 3000. Meaning, you know, full steam ahead or whatever the figure of speech would be, auf Deutsch. Ray for Tesla is reporting on May 18th. Tesla applied for a trademark for Cybertruck in China. Does that mean it's coming? I mean, it, it might. It, Kind of sounds like it. And in kind of weird, kind of offbeat news, in the US, Tesla's applied for a trademark for the Tesla design for restaurants, restaurant services, pop up restaurants, self service restaurants, and takeout restaurants. I mean, sure, let's combine them with superchargers, but uh, is that uh, really a business we're going to get into? I mean, okay. So guys, what did I miss or misunderstand? You know, leave me all your wisdom in the comments below and stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when the rains in Texas finally subside, which at this point I'm pretty sure is going to be a never. But I do want to hear from you guys, even if the rains are still going. <laughs>